is. I'll go get the mail, Junior. Give me my paper and lunchbox. I gotta rush. Well, you can't go to work on an empty stomach. I'm not going on an empty stomach. I'm going on the bus. Well, where's the rest of the paper? The uh, wind must have blown it. Yeah, it's funny, it blows the same pages out every morning. Now sit down and eat your breakfast, Riley. No, I'll eat this on the way to the plant. Maybe you won't have to go to the plant anymore, Pop. Huh. Here's a letter from the boss. <laughs> Junior, don't kid, you might have choked me to death. It says Cunningham Aircraft Company, Office of the President. He never corresponded with me before. What do you suppose the contents contains? Go ahead and open it. Sure, go ahead, Daddy. If you're canned, you're canned. Junior, stop putting ideas in his head. Don't be silly. Why would he fire you by mail? Because that's the way that no good weasel runs the plant. He don't call you in and say you're fired, you dope. No. No, he sends you a nice, polite letter saying, we regret your invaluable services we can very well do without. That's called labor management, good relations. <laughs> If you're scared to open it, I'm not. I'm not scared. I'm panicky. Oh, what an ungrate. Depended on me for everything. When he wanted a rivet, he yelled for me. When he wanted a bolt, he yelled for me. When he wanted a nut, he yelled for me. Riley, listen to this. I'll take it sitting down. My dear Chester. Using my maiden name, he's letting me down easy. Quiet, Daddy. Let Mom read it. Since you have been with Cunningham Incorporated for a period of 10 years, serving loyally and ably, we wish to show our appreciation by a little testimonial luncheon in your honor tomorrow in the boardroom at 1 p.m. sharp. Faithfully yours, Cyrus P. Cunningham, President. A lunch in my honor. Oh, Riley. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> you see, you had him all wrong. We had him all wrong. All right, let's not split atoms. I had him all wrong. Uh, hey, it's 7.30, Pop. Holy smoke, I'll miss the bus. A loyal and able worker ain't never laid at his bench. <laughs> Daddy, that's not your lunch. <laughs> Riley, my purse. Cunningham's letter with that thing pounding. I already heard it a dozen times. I got cauliflowers in my ears now. Imagine. Only ten years an able-bodied worker and he's given me a free lunch. A couple of crummy sandwiches and you're making an incident out of it. There ain't gonna be no crummy sandwiches. This is a ritzy blowout. Strictly high class. We'd be eating like pigs. Well, that's tomorrow. Let's start eating today. Huh? Oh, yeah. I bet you Peg fixed me a better lunch than your wife. You're covered. <laughs> no bet. What's that? I must have got the wrong box. Look, let's skip lunch and you and me will go out and take a look at the boardroom, eh? What for? Well, I want to see where my triumvirate's going to take place. But I want to eat. Look, you can do me a favor, can't you? All right, powder your nose and let's go. <laughs> Wait for me, Gillis. Hey, this is a classy layout, huh? This is wrong, Riley. I'm telling you, this is wrong. Hey, look. Special hammer for cracking nuts. You'll be the nutty cracks if he catches you in here. Gillis, someday I'm going to be sitting right here in this chair, running the whole plant. We better start running right now. What's so tough about being an executive? All you need is perseverance, ability, and brains. Three strikes, you're out. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't surprise me none if the boss gave me a little gift tomorrow. That's sort of a pimento at a ceremony. Ceremony? He ain't marrying you, he's just feeding you. Uh, this chair was just made for me. Gentlemen, come to order. Mr. Pearson, stick your bubble gum under the table. Mr. Gillis, let's be tidy. Put clean ashes in the ashtrays. 
What's wrong with you? Are you going for jerk? Now, let's see. What do we got here? Trouble and stop shuffling those papers and let's blow. Call Washington imperative. That means it can wait. Discuss new tail assembly emergency. I'll cancel that. Gift for rally car. That ain't important. Take up the matter of... Car! Josh! The boss has given me a car. Keep dreaming, you'll wake up in the street. It says so right here in white and black, you can read, can't you? Gift for Riley, C-A-R, that spells car, don't it? That's justice for you. You're getting a whole car for yourself, and I can't even get a seat on the bus. Imagine. All these years, I thought Cunningham was a skunk, and he turns out to be half human. <laughs> Life is full of surprises, Gillis. Thank you. Don't lie. Duck, where? Now, the caterers will be in this afternoon to decorate this table for the luncheon tomorrow. Well, I, I do hope he follows my color scheme. That chair. Uh, uh, Roger. It's a good idea giving this luncheon for Riley. He deserves it. And besides, it's good public relations. Now, we'll move this table. Are you ready? We'll go. Lift. doing here? Who are you? Two of your humble workers. Uh, from their homeland. Uh, what are you doing in the boardroom? Just offering a noonday prayer for the safety of the plant, as is a native custom. Oh, well, that's very commendable. Report at once to your foreman. In the future, will you conduct your ceremonies elsewhere? Come, Dangle. Peace be with you. My sentiments exactly. Have you set the table, dear? Not yet. I'm just starting. Father didn't have any breakfast or lunch, so he'll want to eat as soon as he gets home. I don't see why we have to have dinner early. Just because Daddy was dope enough not to take his lunch box. Don't you speak that way of your father. He can't help it if he's a dope. <laughs> What's for dinner, Mom? Oh, you'll see. Here, take these dishes into the dining room. Oh, gee, that's women's work. Oh, help, Babs, Junior. Won't hurt you for once. Okay. Only I'm not responsible for breakage. Forget about the dishes. Junior can pay for them out of his allowance. What allowance? <laughs> There's five dollars worth of dishes. Now, quiet, everybody, and listen. Peg, the most exciting thing has happened. You got a raise. You got promoted. You got canned. <laughs> Fine family I got. A bolt hits me out of the blue and my family stands there looking at me like I was crazy. You mean you got conked by a bolt? No. Well, why doesn't somebody say something? We might, dear, if you just tell us what happened. A car, a car. Cunningham has given me a car. You're right, kidding. I don't no. believe you. Cross, cross my heart. I saw it laying right there on a the table, a brand new car. Riley, dear, you didn't get your head caught in the bus door again, did you? I seen the memo. It said, gift for Riley, car. Gillis seen it, too. A car? Yeah. Oh, boy. Daddy, that's wonderful. Oh, it just can't be true. It's the car, our very own. <laughs> nice going, Pop. What make are they giving you? Well, I won't know to lunch tomorrow, but I hope it's got one of them hydrophobia drives. <laughs> you're mad at Daddy. Yeah. I can see us right now on Sunday, threading our way through traffic. Ho, ho, ho. Won't you sit in the front seat, Mrs. Riley? I'm going to sit in the front. You sit in the back with your sister and keep your feet off the upholstery. <laughs> Step right in, Mrs. Riley. Oh, thank you. Oh. Oh. oh, look at this beautiful dashboard. Why, there's a radio and a heater and an air conditioner. Yeah, it's got a freezer under the front seat, too. <laughs> honk, honk, we're off. Drive too fast. I ain't even got the car yet. She's backseat driving already. Now, Pop, she's smoking. Who oh, could have my dad? Be careful, I'm going around a curve.
looks very festive, Dangle. We try, Mr. Cunningham, we try. <laughs> Did you arrange for the gift for Riley? Uh, uh, Hobson's promised it by noon. Uh -huh. A reliable, most reliable firm. Are you sure you have the initials correct? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, Chester A. Riley, C-A-R. Just like you wrote it on your memo. Good. <laughs> I can hardly wait till I see Riley's face when I present him with that 14-carat solid gold-plated watch. Excellent choice, sir. Excellent choice. I never saw such a family. Everybody excited. I'm the only one that's calm. It's early yet, dear. You don't have to be there till 1 o'clock. The foreman gave me the morning off to get ready, not to argue. There you are, Dad. Uh. Ah, oh, swell. Bend my nose a little to the right, I'm another Barrymore. There's a hole in the shoe, Doc. What's the difference, Junior? I won't be doing no more walking. Oh, Dumplin', I wish you could be there when they hand me the car. Oh, I'd be a trifle out of place. After all, it's only for men. Yeah, that's right. It's strictly for stags. A female moose wouldn't fit in. <laughs> Holy smokes, the lunch whistle. I'm late. All right, are you prepared? Half in time. Grab him, Junior. <laughs> Express. You've got two hours yet, Dave. You know, you'd look better at lunch with your pants on. No, let's not get excited at me. Let's all take time. Attention, please. Let's have some attention. Now, uh, we've heard a number of speeches today in due praise of our good friend and co-worker, Chester A. Riley. This is it. I hope it's a yellow sedan. The boss is going to speech. In fact, some of the speeches have been longer than the spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh, you dope. <laughs> That's a hot one, boys. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> so without any further ado, it is my privilege to present a token which expresses not only my feelings, but the feelings of the entire plant. How are they going to get us through the door? <laughs> Something that will help them to get to work on time. <laughs> Wheeler in. <laughs> With the congratulations and best wishes of the Cunningham Aircraft Company. So <laughs> he's part of the dashboard. I mean, where's the rest of it? Why, it's all here, Riley. Fourteen jewel Swiss movement. Mr. Cunningham, I... I don't know how to thank you for this streamlined model of power and energy. We never had one in the family before. All I can say is... Every Sunday, when me and the family sit in it and roll down the highway with... <laughs> what I mean is... I just want to say... I just want to say... What a revolting development this is! <laughs> home an hour ago. Now, don't be impatient, children. You know, you have to drive a new car very slowly. Maybe you ran into something. Don't say things like that. Bag. Where's the car, Pop? What color is it? Where'd you come from, dear? I came in the back way. The car's in the alley. Come on. Hold it, hold it. The car ain't in the alley. Well, where did you leave it, dear? Well, you see, it's like this, Peg. Well, Daddy, you got it. Why, I'd just die if you didn't. I told all the girls at school. I promised Melon had a ride tomorrow. Now, of course he got it. Your father wouldn't fool us like that. Well, it was an unexpected development. Oh, I understand. Driving license, registration, all that sort of red tape. Yeah, there was a lot of that, too. Well, when will we get it, Daddy? Will it be here tomorrow? <laughs> Peg, I thought I was going to get a car at the lunch today, you but... You mean you didn't? What a sad this is gonna make out of me. Oh, I see it's coming direct from the factory. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's it. F.O.B. That means from out of Baltimore. It'll be here in a couple of days. Hurry up with them wheels. We're almost ready to roll. <laughs> so these ought to fit. How do you like it? Somehow I don't think Peggy's gonna believe this is the car the boss gave me. What do you expect for 11 bucks? All we need is an engine, a few wheels, and a coat of stove polish, and it'll look like it fell right off the assembly line. Yeah, well, you, you sure that old airplane engine is gonna fit in here? If it don't, we'll start fresh and build another car around it. Come on, get in, let me see how it looks on you. <laughs> I told you that fish glue wasn't gonna hold. We can put a couple of nails in it. Come on. What am I gonna do, Gillis? There's only one out. What's that? Get hit by a truck. Yeah. <laughs> if I don't make good, Peg and the kids are gonna hate me. I dug my own grave, now I gotta lie in it. That's an idea. They'd never think of looking there. Maybe I can join the army. You're too old, Ryle. Not for the Salvation Army. <laughs> mm. Hey, that's a classy job. The one we made's got the same line. Yeah, only crooked. Hey, Gillis, this one's got seats. Let's get in and get the feel of the wheel, huh? Hey, what if the owner comes back? We'll tell him we're a couple of oil maggots looking for a good buy. You know they got special cells in the pokey for guys that do things like this? Come on. This is wrong, Riley. This is wrong. Ah, uh, just sitting in it gives me a boot. <laughs> hey, Riley. Look at the registration. This is the boss's car. Get, Get out! <laughs> Every time you breathe, I get in trouble. Boss must be in the barbershop. I hope he had a hot towel on his puss. Uh, if I could only surprise Peg and the kids with a job like this. I got news for you. You're gonna. They're just coming down the street. <laughs> Oh, they'll think this is the car. What am I gonna do? Stick us something quick, Gillis. Pretend you're a stranger. No, they'll never believe that. <laughs> Get in the back and lie down. Yeah, yeah, stall them oh, off. Yeah. I will. Look, Mom, it is a convertible. Oh, hello, Mr. Gillis. Where did Riley go? Riley? Who's Riley? Oh, stop it, Gillis. I saw you and Riley sitting in our car. Junior, get away from there. You'll wear it out. Oh, here's Daddy, Mom. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> Hello, Peg. Oh, Riley, it's gorgeous. Well, what else is new? Well, I'll be seeing you, Riley. Right? So <laughs> Wait a minute, Gillis. Don't go. Junior, get away from there. What for? It's ours, ain't it? No. Beds. Riley, you get behind the wheel. You can drive us home. No, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Peg, but the, well, what I mean is, well, they forgot to give me the keys. They're hanging right here in the ignition. Oh, they are? I mean, are they? Come on, Pop, let's drive her up. Bet you she do 90. Out of 40 million kids, I got to own Barney Olfi. <laughs> Yeah, I ask what's going on here. Uh, Mr. Cunningham. Oh, I'm Mrs. Riley, Mr. Cunningham. This is our daughter, Babs. Hello. We want to thank you for the wonderful gift. Yeah, they're going to spend a lot of time polishing it and keeping it in good running order. It's a wonderful car, Mr. Cunningham. Well, it ought to be. It costs $6,000. You're going to sell it, Pop. Why don't you sell it to Mr. Cunningham? Barney Jr., he's, he's taking a business course. He's always practicing something, something. <laughs> We're just driving it home. Can we drop you somewhere? You're driving it home? Well, no, dear, not driving it home. See, she meant... What? You, you don't understand. <laughs> Junior, don't push anything! I'm going to cry! It's tragic to a shame. Riley, I demand an explanation of this. <laughs> Watch 
you gave me for a start. Uh, I'll pay back every cent, boss. I'll work overtime, nights and Sundays. I I'll pay you back. I'll pay I gave a luncheon to in this box. Oh, boss, don't. Stop the water. Stop the water. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead and say it, Peg. I'm a no good four flusher. I'll never amount to anything. I'll be a failure all my life. I'll never be anything but a riveter. I don't blame you for hating me. Oh, we don't hate you, dear. We know what you were trying to do, and we love you very much. Do you, Peg? Of course, Dad. What's an old car as long as we've got you? <laughs> you mean it, Babs? You're the best pop in the whole world. Thanks, Junior. Well, you know we're crazy about you. We couldn't do without you. You're a lucky woman. 